What's up, y'all? Eric here, driver lineup, world's okay steering wheel holder. I say y'all because this video, I'm going to talk about Texas for a little bit. Uh, and then I'll get to my thoughts on 50,000 miles. There's going to be some breeze blowing through here. And that's because while the rest of you, or most of you, are going through some pretty cool temperatures, it's hotter in Hades down here in Texas, South Texas. Um, just blazing hot, man. But tomorrow, temperature is going to drop to a freezing 71 degrees. <laughs> I was talking, I had to pick up a trailer uh, yesterday. Jen, for those who don't know, Jen and I own a ranch. Uh, and when I say ranch, I'm not like, you know, we had like there's, it's substantial land, you know. <laughs> so I need to get a trailer for, we don't live on it. It's got like months and months of work to do but uh i had to pick up a trailer yesterday at, from tractor supply you know just a little utility trailer and the girl was out she was you know checking all the lights and everything make sure it works right with the hitch and all that before they sold it to me and i was and we were out in a just blazing hot like it just out in the sun for like an hour um getting all the title information for this trailer and everything and i was just like dripping sweat you know and i'm i'm telling her like this is miserable i actually started the car i said do you want to sit in the car she's trying to sit there doing paperwork so i'm like i got ac going and she goes no no i love this is i love this i'm all about this i love it when it's hot and so we started talking about how it's going to be cool here in south texas this weekend because of this polar blast or whatever the hell it's called and I asked her, I said, well, what's cold to you? And she said, well, what's miserable cold to me, she's lifelong here in San Antonio. She said, what's miserable cold to me is like 39, 40 degrees. So I was just cracking up laughing. I'm like, man, 40 degrees. I think I have a video on this channel, uh, maybe not last winter, but the winter before the spring after the one before last winter <clears throat> where it started we were out in the truck and it started reaching 40 degree temps and i was out in a fleece and i was loving it to me after going through a winter 40 degrees was like perfect you know so i just thought it was really funny how here in san antonio they think that 40 degrees is freezing cold i think 40 degrees is perfect like hoodie weather you know so this is really funny so today it's like hot 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 tomorrow it's going to be perfect 71 degrees and it's supposed to be in the 70s all week so while everyone else in the country is dealing with this polar plunge here in south texas we're going to have absolutely perfection and that's why we moved to south texas because through the winter the coldest it really gets is 40 degrees i get colder at night you know but um Really the average temperature, you know, the coldest. The coldest week you're gonna have is probably like 40 degrees uh, in the middle of the day during the week. Um, and that's that's like, ex that's considered extreme. <laughs> so, but anyway, another thing about Texas, and by the way, Jim C, if you watch this video, I wanna know how you got a Bucky's hat driving a truck because you absolutely cannot park a truck at a Bucky's. So I'd really love to know the story of how you have a Bucky's hat. Uh, Jim C's on YouTube and his student that he just finished, uh, TNT, is driving one of my trucks. So I was watching his video about 50,000 miles and he's got a Bucky's hat, which is primarily a Texas uh, fuel, uh, fuel gas stop, gas station, but it's epic, awesome. Um, so... And a couple other things about, well, one primary other thing about Texas is the critters. Holy shit, man. The critters here are, I killed a scorpion yesterday in my garage. And I don't live out here on the ranch yet. Like if it was out here on the ranch, okay. But I live in like a brand new subdivision, you know, <laughs> right now. We're renting in a in a brand new subdivision, and to, so I've had like a 
we've we've had we've they've seen baby rattlesnakes out there in the middle of the street uh we killed a scorpion we have ants and spiders and shit all over the place in the middle of a subdivision brand new subdivision but out here on the ranch it's a whole like it's it's like texas freaking jurassic park man there are these spiders and everybody says they're good spiders we've even had people comment of like can we come get some of them because i guess they do good things but these things are like jurassic man they're like i don't they're like four inches like these demonic looking things with yellow on their backs and their bellies big huge black spiders i can't remember what they're called um but they're apparently good spiders you know but man they are just wicked wicked looking spiders and we've got like four or five of them in view out here at the ranch uh where we park and where i'm doing some work uh and that and the 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 red the texas red ants they are absolutely gnarly man they're like a half inch long and they build these interstate like they build their own highways that go these highways i mean they're dirt but they they clear there's so much traffic of these ants that they clear like a four inch wide path that's like 20 or 30 feet long and uh and it's just a highway of these these brutal texas red ants so yesterday i was following all these little ant highways and there were about six of them that led to one big hole it's not a big mound it's just like a they've got like their own little cave entrance um the, the hole is probably about an inch and a half two inches wide and ants are just flowing in and out of this thing so i went and dropped some seven on that hole and just you know napalm the shit out of it so we'll see how that goes but <laughs> that's uh that's texas man and the easement that goes to our ranch is goes through a cattle ranch uh we could put fencing up but it's just so long it, it would just cost so much money we're, there's no way we're going to do that so we actually have to drive through a cattle ranch to get to our ranch so there's these texas longhorns roaming around and it's just we've got palm trees like it you feel south texas beautiful property like unbelievably beautiful lots of trees palm trees uh there's cactus really cool looking cactus the kind that bear the fruit it's called like cactus pears or something like that um beautiful beautiful land but man you feel it when it's just hot as blazes and you're fighting this jurassic park of texas creatures you know um take some getting used to because i'm a northern boy so well actually i'm a nevada boy but you know spent the last before trucking the last decade and a half in the midwest upper midwest chicago area so definitely takes some adjustment to get used to the Texas life. Anyway, all that said, I'm eight minutes in. I, I'm not, look, there's tons of videos out there about this 50,000 mile thing. So I'll try and be quick with my commentary. I'm not, you go find, go look on YouTube if you want to, like, look, to summarize it, it's 50,000 miles again on TNT. It's not breaking news. Every prime YouTuber is talking about it. And it has been for like a week, so I'm not giving you new any new information. Um, but TNT is back to 50,000 miles. And um, I, I guess I wanted to address it first. So I've had several people uh, direct message me on Discord about this. Um, one is student, one a trainer. And to the trainer, the way I explained it, I, I was like, well, I'm not really sure what you're upset about because as a trainer i think this is a good thing because you're so now when your student hits thirty thousand miles which is at the point that they should have already been ready to upgrade so they they're they're pretty safe driving a truck with you you can sleep and not be real concerned they can run the truck they can fuel they can deal with customers they can back into docks they can run the truck 
Well, now that student is on your truck for another four or five weeks. So that's pretty easy team money, right? You're not really having to do a whole lot of training at that point. You just run a team truck. So like I would rather have, I'd rather do that than go get a brand new student who just out of PSD and is going to be dangerous while you're trying to sleep. So, and then you could, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're with this person for a lot longer. Just take them home for a week. Take some home time, take a week off in the middle, break it up. Let the student go home for a week. You go home for a week. Uh, but man, I don't, I can't subscribe to the idea. This is really bad for trainers. I think it's great for trainers. Uh, is it bad for a student? Well, yeah, you, you got to stay on the truck longer. But look at it on the bright side. The pay is good for TNT now. It's great for TNT. You can make more solo, of course, but it's not terrible um, for TNT. And you're going you're gonna to know and should be pretty confident that when you upgrade, you're going to be able to ready, you're going to be ready to rock that shit. You know, you're really going to know how to run a truck. Um, so try to find the positive in it. And the last thing I would say is that, uh, you know, they say truck shortage. There's always been a truck shortage. There was a truck shortage when I came through training years ago. I had to wait for a truck. Long before COVID and long before all this stuff that's happening now, there were still truck shortages. So I had a, there was not a truck when I was ready to upgrade. So there's always been truck shortages. I think with the bigger problem, and, it didn't, and this should be the biggest concern, is that the freight industry tells you a lot about the economy. And I've got, I know some people on the spot market right now. And, um, but I know one person who's coming back to prime right now, running from the spot market, um, because freight is so bad right now and it's only going to get worse. We're, we're heading into the winter months. If it's not, if it's not, if it's this bad going into Thanksgiving and Christmas, then it's going to be really bad in January, February, March. Um, so you are, count yourself fortunate to be with Prime that has such great contracts because if you didn't have that right now, boy, I would not be happy about what's ahead for the spot market um, and not in non-contract freight because it's ugly. There's fewer ships coming in. A lot less product coming in, a lot less disposable income, much less credit in the economy. People are buying only what they need to survive, man. And that's what we haul. <laughs> Food, beer, medicine. <laughs> it's pretty much what Prime hauls. Um, but, I, but even that's going to feel the pinch. And I think that's, I don't have any proof or evidence of this, but I think that's probably, it's happened before. Prime has changed it to 50,000 miles to protect the freight for the existing driver base. Because if it's not profitable for the drivers, they're going to leave. Um, and so this keeps team trucks, uh, keeps trucks team longer and keeps it so that there are less trucks fighting for less freight. I would suspect that Prime knows that it's going to be a rough uh, first quarter of next year. And so they're preparing to run uh, team trucks, fewer trucks for fewer, f fewer loads. Um, and that's why, they, and, and you remember if you get long timers, remember two years ago or whenever it was that it was at 50,000 miles, um, that was actually acknowledged that that was a big part of the reason. It was less about the truck shortage and more about protecting, uh, the existing driver base and ensuring that there's enough freight and loads for the existing driver base. So, uh, so you know, the concern for me is not the 50,000 miles. The concern for me is the economy. So anyway, that's my thoughts. All right, coming up on 15 minutes, I'm waiting on somebody to meet me here who's going to be helping me with some stuff out here at the ranch. Uh, he should be here any minute. So I'm going to get off of here and get ready for him. I got to open up a gate so he can get in. But I want to give you guys a quick update and give you some thoughts on that 50,000 mile thing. And hopefully that is helpful in some way, shape or form. 
Be safe, make good decisions, and as always, drive to thrive. Talk to you guys soon.